How do we go from this to this to this? Hello everybody, welcome to Mycophilia. This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about a technique that's often not talked about much, but it can be very effective for certain situations. And that is called agar slurry. I learned this technique from a TC on the S. Marie called Mac Murden, who previously learned it from Waylet Jim on Mycotopia. And this technique is very old, so I have no idea who started it. But anyways, while I'm setting up everything in the SAB for this, I'm going to go over exactly what the pros and cons are of this technique. So essentially agar slurry is the most direct way to get your mycelium on your agar plate directly into a syringe in liquid form. So no liquid culture, no liquid inoculant. Now there's pros and cons to this as I said. So what are the benefits? Well, it is the most direct way to get mycelium from your plate of agar directly into a syringe, aka it's the easiest way to have a form of liquid mycelium that will make inoculation easier in certain situations. You don't have to wait, for example, for colonization like you do with liquid culture, and technically if you do it right, it can be a safer technique than liquid culture. Having said that, this technique is not meant to be a substitute for liquid culture or liquid inoculant. It's for a very specific purpose, at least it is for me. So what exactly are the cons of this technique? Well, you can't propagate it any more than what you can fit in your syringe. That's the mycelium that you have. That's the, all the mycelium that you will have to work with. It's not like liquid culture where, you know, the mycelium can keep growing and you could take a bit out and then it'll grow again. And also, unlike liquid inoculant, you're limited by however big your syringe is. You can't have any more. Whereas with liquid inoculant, you know, you could drop a puck in there inside a jar and you could inoculate tons and tons of grain jars with it and have fast colonization on all of them. With this, you're very limited with the amount of liquid mycelium you're going to end up with. So you must be asking, why, Sage, would you choose to use agar slurry rather than, say, liquid inoculant? Well, I use liquid inoculant for grain jars, but agar slurry, I only use it for BRF style cakes, aka PF cakes, because it is a fantastic way to test out untested genetics. You know, if I'm not going for multi-spore syringes, let's say I got a bunch of plates that I need to test out, you know, basically untested cultures, I could quickly whip it up, make an agar slurry, and just inject a bunch of PF jars and check their growth. I don't even know if it's a culture worth propagating, right? So I just want to test it out. That's what it's fantastic for because it's in a needle. It's immediate. And basically with these types of BRF jars, usually you have four holes and you're going to insert the syringe and put the inoculant in there. So that's why uh, this tech is fantastic for that because you could immediately put the contents of an agar plate into a syringe and make it ready for inoculating BRF jars. So with that out of the way, let me show you guys how to make agar slurry. For this, all you need is a clean syringe with clean water inside or some kind of way to get clean water into the syringe in your sab, aka with a jar or something, and a plate of the colonized mycelium that you like to put into the syringe, and perhaps an extra plate to take a transfer off of that plate just in case you want to keep it later on. So once everything's ready, the sab's ready, then as you can see, I'm putting water onto the plate. That's what you want to do, just squirt a little bit of water to lube it up, and then just gently, gently start scratching at the surface of the mycelium really guys you need minimal force it's just barely touching it will do the job and it'll do it better because if you do it too hard as you will probably see in this video you can easily get chunks of the agar stuck inside the needle and it's a pain to get out so now i'm just going to speed things up and show you guys you know me just scraping all the mycelium off now, of course, you want to be very mindful of your sterile technique. You don't want to have anything over the plate, and you want to make sure that the water you squirt in here doesn't uh, fall off the edge of the plate. So while I was talking to you guys right now in the video, what I did was after I finished scraping most of the mycelium off, then what I did was I shot some more water from the top of the plate so that I could get some extra bits of mycelium from the plate onto the pool of water with the rest of the mycelium towards the bottom edge of the plate. Because remember, it's angled and that's where I want all the water and mycelium bits to go because from there I will eventually be sucking it up into the syringe. Now, I don't know if you guys caught that, but while I was talking, I tried to suck it back up into the syringe, but it was impossible because the syringe was blocked. So now I'm just releasing more water onto the plate and just using it as an opportunity to clear the syringe hole, but also pick up any extra bits of mycelium again. So remember guys, it's very, very important that you use minimal force, no force at all, just very basically touching the needle onto the plate and just gently scraping it. That is more than enough. So here I am again experiencing some syringe difficulties. So it's not sucking it up because it's blocked again. So I released a little bit on the wall of the sab. 
and I'm trying it again, but it still seems to be blocked. And the thing is, it's very, very easy to get a clogged syringe, but it's also very, very easy to avoid it. And that is basically when you're sucking it up, keep away from the agar wedge. Oh yeah, you think that you're not on the agar wedge, but believe me, it's very easy to miss the spot. There's a very small opening where it's perfect for you to suck up the water because you don't want the needle to be touching the agar plate because then it will get blocked again. So I will repeat this cycle a few more times of pushing some water into the plate, sucking it back up, pushing it back in, sucking it back up, because through this cycle, I'll ensure that I get a good amount of the mycelium pieces into my syringe. Also, I don't put any more than 5 cc of water onto the plate because that'll make it very easy to overflow and just increases the risk. So 5 cc of water is pretty much all you need on the plate to basically get most of the mycelium. So basically, after I got done making my syringe, the plan was to take that syringe and shoot a little bit of the mycelium water onto a new plate as a transfer. But I decided, you know what, let's have a little experiment here of sterile technique. And I'm going to take the exact same plate that I slurried and take a transfer from there. Remember, it's been open for a while now. And I'm going to put it to a new plate and see how it goes. Now, how do you guys think it fared? I will show you at the end of the video. And here is the beautiful syringe just ready to go and inoculate some jars. So if you could look closely there, you could see some bits of mycelium floating around. There's quite a bit of mycelium in there. And I used that syringe to inoculate a bunch of poo cakes afterwards. And here is the results from a couple of days after inoculation. So as you can see, there is full of healthy, clean mycelium. I inoculated six jars out of that one syringe and they are all showing strong, healthy growth. So now we have reached the end of the video. So how do you guys think that piece of subculture from the slurried agar plate fared? Well, here it is, and it fared beautifully. There's no signs of contam or anything. That little yellow thing there, on this side it's a little white dot. That's actually just another piece of transfer that actually fell off of my blade. So it is not a contaminate it is not a contaminant. As you can see, the color is the same there. So yeah, it's just another piece of mycelium subculture. And so it was awesome. No problem at all. Now, would I actually go ahead and use this to inoculate something? Let's say some grain jars? No, I would actually take a transfer and just do another one. That's just good sterile practice, you know, just to be safe because your spawn is the most important thing basically in this hobby to ensure that you have good clean spawn so even though it might not look contaminated there could be some contaminants but there's clearly no overt contamin contaminants that we can see it's growing in a nice even way right so looks like it's it doesn't have much problem and i also decided to keep the original slurry plate just also as another experiment to see uh, if it would contam. And so far, it's it's got no problem. It's been a while since I've actually made that video, at least a week, and it's going beautifully. Right, as you can see, it was on the 30th I filmed it. So uh, it's actually starting to come back with mycelium, as you can see. There's a little white fuzz coming on, and that's sort of the mycelium coming. So, yeah, I will see. I will see. And I will let you guys know the update, if it does get contamined or if it keeps growing fine. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Like and a comment and a share makes Sage a happy mycophile. All right, guys, have a great one. Mycophile Sage, checking out.